Wow. So much chaos and destruction. What is up, my dudes, and welcome to another video. And this is a video here that I do not want to be making. It is just so, so sad what is going on in our area right now. I'm standing out here on Palafox Pier, and this is the aftermath of Hurricane Sally. And I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit about what is going on in the area, kind of tell my hurricane story, and uh, kind of show you some of the damage because it is just, it is just truly, truly terrible. There will be no Pensacola tourist life or fishing or anything like that for a very, very long time here. So as you can see right here, guys, this is the Sailing Academy here at Palafox Pier. Man, just total, total destruction. This will kind of give you a better look of what happened at Palafox Marina here. I mean, check that out. That's a boat that is just completely sunk. There's another boat. And you know what the crazy thing about it is they have already pulled. This is two days after the storm. They've pulled probably two or three dozen boats out of here already that were piled on top of each other like a bunch of toys. It is just so freaking sad. Check this out right here. Look at this. Just so freaking sad. Check out the end of that dock right there, guys. That is at the tip of a boat that is completely sunk. And then you've got a sailboat right here that's just wedged in between the docks. And this just goes on as far as you can see. It is just like complete destruction. Just boats underwater, boats ruined. Just crazy. This is the ferry boat that takes people over to Fort Pickens and drops them off. Man, that is just insane. This is a gigantic boat. Here's another one. This is the Gulf, Gulf Island National Seashores Tour right here. Another boat that's just completely out of commission. So I'm going to drive around just a little bit, show you the area. Literally where I'm driving right now on Main Street was completely underwater uh, two days ago. Like under the whole place was underwater we have never had a flood like that in this area it was it, 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 since i've been alive i mean maybe hurricane ivan but this was this was different this was different this was unlike this was a sucker punch and it was unlike anything i've ever seen i'm pulling into the blue wahoos stadium right now because i want to take a look at it so i'm at the blue wahoos stadium right now and as you can see just more craziness just big expensive sailboats just washed up to shore there's the first look at my office right here guys i'm driving up to my office for the first time doesn't look good i was told that the roof got blown off of my office and that the whole building flooded and so that's kind of what we're dealing with. And as we enter the parking lot here, you can see that there's just a huge crew in the office parking lot. So guys, you can actually see people up on the roof of my office right now. And I just want to thank all these people on the front lines, these first responders, these people that are just two days after a storm out here already getting everything back to or trying to get everything back to normal because without you guys our city would be in chaos for months and months and months so this is the office parking lot right here and as you can see trees down all kind of stuff it is just it is just crazy and look at those dumpsters right there, guys. That is all debris from the office building. That is roof and all kind of other stuff. Well, this is the office building and office room, and it smells horrible in here because of the flooding, the no air condition. We do have power back on in here. Thank the Lord. A big portion of our city does not have power. Melanie and I were fortunate enough to get power back on extremely quickly. And so, you know, I'm super thankful and blessed from that aspect. But, um, man, it is just, it is awful. And you have to ask yourself, 
why did this happen? And I'm gonna kind of tell that story right now. So hurricane week kind of started like this, okay? Last Monday, Bama Beach Bum and I decided to go fishing. And we went out to Gator Lake, had a great time. We knew there was a tropical storm in the Gulf, but we weren't too concerned with it. We were like, oh, there's tro we get tropical storms all the time. It's Florida, we're gonna be okay. We even had a great time fishing, caught some nice fish. Hey, hurry, hurry, I don't know how I'm gonna get him. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna get him up. Not even, how am I gonna get him up? I don't know. You wanna, right. you wanna get him? All right, I'll try. I'll okay, Bama, get him. This is a freaking game. Go, go, I'm get the trout. I'm gonna get eaten by gator, bro. Get the trout. Oh look, what a fish. Wow, look at the spots on that guy. Oh, that's a beautiful trout. Look at how many spots he has. It's been a tough it has morning. been a tough morning. That's a pretty one right there. I'm gonna release him. Where, do, where can we release him at? Look at there, man. What a beauty. Oh, go. hey, go that way. They, they like to go the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Well, that day ended, and the next day, Tuesday, we uh, looked at the weather report, and it showed an easterly swing. The storm was, like, kind of heading a little more east. It was supposed to go way west of here. That's why we weren't concerned. And it was also strengthening in power. But we still were like, yeah, you know, we get these all the time. It's like the boy who cried wolf. We weren't overly concerned with it because the weather channel cries wolf all the time and so we weren't we were like yeah we'll just kind of stick it out and see what happens well by wednesday the storm had even turned more east and it was like sitting right in front of pensacola perdido orange beach and it wasn't moving it was moving at two miles an hour sitting there spinning just like this and that is when we started to get concerned because when a storm sits there and spins, all it does is strengthen in power and drops rainfall. And so our area was getting an insane amount of rainfall. But it also was such a surprise to everyone that this happened that nobody prepared. Nobody tied their boats up properly. Nobody moved their big boats. Nobody, us. Uh, the craziest one, what I'm gonna talk about later, is Skanska, the company building the three mile bridge. They didn't even properly tie their barges up and people were having like 500 foot barges come up in their backyard. It was the craziest thing ever. Because us as a community didn't have time to properly prepare, this storm hit Wednesday night at about 2 a.m. and it was complete devastation. It had strengthened all the way to a Category 3, had gusts up to 130 miles an hour, and just sat there at 2 miles an hour, spinning and dropping rainfall. We woke up the next morning and just could not believe what we saw. It, when you, at the start of this video at Palafox Pier where you saw me uh, at the start, that was just a, a little bit of what happened there, okay? There was over $30 million worth of boats piled up on top of each other the day after the storm right there. Nobody could get to them because that was underwater. That whole area was underwater. It was so crazy. And there are thousands and thousands of people without power still to this day here in Pensacola, Orange Beach, Perdido Key, Navarre, tons of people without power. The gas lines, I think you saw Bama Beach Bum talk a little bit about the gas lines earlier. Insane. The first two days after the storm, there was like two gas stations in the whole area that had gas and you had to wait six to eight hours to get gas. And then the odds of you even getting gas once you got up there were slim to none. So been a complete disaster. And so for me to kind of navigate this whole situation, we, we left, went to central Alabama for a day to try to get supplies and to just try to kind of recoup, uh, find whatever we needed. And uh, I actually, uh, we stayed up there for a day. I got to fish for a couple hours and I got to do some freshwater fishing at a place in central Alabama, which was a lot of fun. I actually caught a few fish and I'll drop that right here. Whew, man, this area is so beautiful. So beautiful. I have one rod set out there, another rod set out there. 
and another rod set out by the bend. Guys, this is this bridge that I'm fishing right here is fresh water, which is kind of cool. And so you, you have an opportunity to catch monster fish right here. I've talked to some people and I've actually fished in this area a lot when I was a child. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a video. Melanie and I were fortunate enough to not have any crazy damage during the hurricane. Thank the Lord. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that did and so keep those people in your prayers all right so the first thing we're going to do is toss out a night crawler and the reason why is because i've never fished this spot before and this will give me an indication if there's anything at all biting here and also it will um, potentially let me catch some big baits like a live bluegill or a big piece of bluegill or something like that all right we got the night crawler set out. Oh, guys, I think something just picked up the night crawler here. Yep, fish on, fish on. Here we go, baby. First fish of the day. Oh, whoa, that is sick, man. What are we working with here? Oh, dude, it's a catfish. No way. It's a cha little channel cat. Heck yeah, dude. Oh, get him up over the rocks. Come here, baby. Look at there. All right. Check that out guys, first fish of the day is just a little channel catfish right here. I was gonna take some home and eat them, and I still might, but I want them to get a little bit bigger than that. So we're gonna let them go. There's no real good way to access the water here. So we're just gonna have to give him a toss. All right guys, I'm gonna throw the net right here. We gotta get us some uh, actual good bait, maybe some shad or something like that. I'm watching for snakes because I do know that they're nearby. I don't know if that's gonna do it or not. Maybe too rocky right here for them. No, I guess not. Oh, I got them, I got them guys. I got a bunch of shad, check it out. Oh my goodness, we got bait for days, boys. Sweet. All right, we got our shad going out now, boys. And I feel a whole lot more confident because I know that these fish in here they're feeding on shad right now. There's a lot of them in here. I got this one on my Lose 4000 speed spin with a toadfish rod, and you wouldn't believe how stout. This toadfish rod has handled some big fish over the, over the course of my channel. You guys, we just got a good bite right here. I don't know if he's on there or not, but he definitely, definitely hit it good. Come on. There he is. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Come here. Come here. I don't know how I'm gonna get him up. He's like kind of swimming down the uh, the rocks. Oh my goodness, how am I gonna get this guy up? I have no clue. It's gonna be a miracle if I get him up without getting snake bit. Oh my gosh, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna have to go this way and pull him this way. <sighs> I think this is gonna be easier. Yeah. Come here. Oh, it's not a not a big one, but oh look, dude, what is this? Oh my goodness. Look at this, guys. That is a freshwater drum. <laughs> I don't think I've ever caught one of these. Look at that. We're gonna release this guy right here. Sorry, buddy. Oh my gosh, guys, I just put this uh, just put this rod back out and it immediately got hit again. Same spot. Let's see. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Back on, why is this one getting smoked every time? Oh my gosh. Guys, we're on again. It's like every time I put a bait on this rod, it gets hammered. Let's see what we've got here. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Oh, it's a catfish. It's another catfish. And these are actually very good to eat here, guys. This is not obviously a saltwater catfish. This is a freshwater cat. Great fish to eat. So as you can see, that fishing trip there was not a total loss. I did catch a few fish. Then the rains came. I got rained, rained out and I had to leave. But I want you to stop right now and shoot me a thumbs up if you think I should go back to that spot 
over this hurricane craziness while I can't fish here and try to catch a monster 50 pound catfish. Cause I talked to some locals there. They were like, gave me some locations in that area. They're like, you can probably catch a 50 pound catfish here. So if you want me to do that, shoot me a thumbs up. Cause I think that'd be kind of cool. Also guys, another silver lining, Jack and Samantha tied the knot. I'm sure you're going to be seeing that on his channel, but we did go to his wedding last night. All right, Jack, give me a comment for the vlog, man. How you feeling? Woo, you don't know until you do it. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a emotional moment. All right, cool man. All right, right here. Good job, dude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they definitely took lessons. Okay. So as you can see, despite an awful storm, there was still a few rays of sunshine to be had. Now moving forward, we don't know what is going to happen with this area. We have no clue because I cannot even get any water or beach access of any kind in this area. I drove around today um, just, uh, just to kind of look and see what is available. There is literally no beach access available anywhere. It is completely off limits. The uh, other places that I like to fish, off limits. Uh, I don't have a boat. And so for me making fishing videos right now is almost impossible. But it's also not in the forefront of my mind. Uh, more importantly, I want to, to rebuild this community, get the community back going and thriving the way it was pre-hurricane and you know so we've been spending our time trying to get back on our feet here and so that is so if you see me take a break from fishing videos for a bit that is the reason it's just because it's in a time like this it's not overly important i felt the need to check in with you just because you know you guys uh, are so loyal to this channel and you know i really appreciate it you're the reason i even have a channel and for that i thank you and so i wanted to give you an update as to what's going on in the area melanie and i are just fine we fared just fine our house had very little damage thankfully and so so uh, I feel very, very fortunate. There's a lot of people that's, like I said, complete total damage, uh, no power, no anything still. And so, uh, you know, we're just doing our best to like help people out and to try to uh, get the community back on their feet right now. And so that's what we're doing. It's just a very, very unfortunate thing, guys. But again, thank you as always for watching these videos. I do appreciate it. Uh, you know, unfortunate. this is unfortunate times for everybody, but I just wanted to check in with you dudes and say what's up and say we're going to get back on our feet. We're going to keep moving forward and I'll catch up with you as soon as I can.